Welcome into the studio. You are looking at Creality's brand new Ender 3 V3. This is a Core XZ architecture and uh, it's pretty awesome from what I've heard. So we're gonna get out of the box and I have some things I need to print. So we're gonna start those prints and uh, show them off. And we're gonna do this a little bit more casual. So sit back, relax, enjoy. All right, let's get it unboxed. Here we go. Uh, All right, got the manual, a little bit of filament, PTFE tube, accessories. So I've got a screen, spool holder. There we go. Green. Looks good. Belted Z for that Corex Z architecture. Looks pretty good. We'll just set this down here out of the way. Small base, wow. Look at that. Tiny little guy. Installation guide. Creality stickers. Okay, so, actually, you know what? Let's bring this bench up just a bit. Where do we gotta go to start? Doesn't look like it's gonna be too difficult to put together. It looks pretty, looks pretty simple. So I want the correct voltage on the machine selected. Oh. All right, that's key. Got to get that correct voltage even before we go any further because it's actually going to be hidden. Yep, 115 volts. Now they want the spool holder mounted, so right here. And they want this just to drop right in here. There it is. Okay. Eight screw assembly. Wow. Right, can you see that right here? So pretty simple. This is going to be what? A five minute assembly. And then it wants uh, two on the underside. Oh yeah, there it is. Okay. That's it. Wow. That's pretty epic. Okay. Now as far as motor connections here, on the back, I mean, this is all pretty simple. Connect that motor there. So tool head here, filament run out sensor there. So I want that here. All right, so now they actually want the screen on. All right, let's get that on. Turn that around for you all. Okay, so they want the PTFE tube. Strain relief connector. Secure it with zip ties. Of course, it's secured with zip ties. Why, why wouldn't it? be secured with anything better than zip ties. I'm not a fan of zip ties. I do not like them. I think this whole zip tie thing on printers is absolutely stupid. Okay, got it? Ooh. Oh well. Okay, all right, well, there it is. All right, we're ready to go. We've gone through the assembly, we've gone through the calibration, we've loaded some filament, and we're ready to print. It did have a firmware update, so we went ahead and did that. Um, I did have a problem when we first tried to load filament after the firmware update. Um, I got some sort of a exception error, and then the interface locked up. That was kind of unfortunate, but I went ahead and just power cycled it. It was able to load filament just fine. Um, that could just been a hang up uh, with, that, with that update. But software is not too difficult uh, to fix, so I'm sure Creator will get that worked out. Um, another kind of complaint real quick before we tell you a little bit more about the machine, this interface, it's attached, um, but as you can see, that looks kind of wiggly. Um, unfortunately, that is a tactile part of the machine that you will end up using. It's, the, it's your user interface, and uh, it's, just, uh, it's just not attached very well. So there's that. 
But other than that, the machine is solid. This is probably one of the more appliance-like machines uh, from Creality that, uh, that we've ever had. Uh, it's about eight bolts to assemble and put together. It was really, really simple. And uh, I feel like anyone can do this. It's, it's a nice machine as far as that's concerned. So now a little bit about the machine. The build volume is 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters on the Z. It has a hot end that's a ceramic style hot end. It's the new style with a quick change nozzle and it gets up to temperatures of 300 C. Now the build plate is this flexible PEI sheet and spring steel sheet and of course it gets up to a temperature of not 100 but 110 C which is kind of nice. So it's not that classic combo of 300-100, it's 300 and 110, which is a little bit nicer. Um, it's running Clipper, of course, and uh, which means you're gonna have that nice web interface from your machine. Now I'm using Creality Print um, on this laptop right here, and Creality Print is what we've, uh, what we've got the model in that we're gonna send to the machine. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We're printing a bowl and we're gonna be printing some other things for some upcoming content. And so right now, the first model that we're gonna throw on this is a bowl. We're gonna print it in Polynature's Polylite PLA Pro, and uh, we're gonna see how that prints. And I've got this thrown into Creality Print Slicer here. I've already got it sliced up, but we'll hit slice again. There we go. And uh, the preview is showing that it's gonna take about five hours and 19 minutes to print, and we should be able to print that over the network. So if I bring up the LAN printing, and uh, there we go, I can select the printer, and I should be able to just hit send, or actually I should be able to hit one click printing. Let's see, make sure the print platform is empty. It is, and uh, I've already cleaned the build plate. So it's saying it's transferring about 16% or 20%. Our plan for this is that we're gonna print a couple of fun models on this for some upcoming content. And uh, so we'll be able to see the quality and see the results and things like that in future videos. Now, in this particular video, this bowl that we're printing first, you'll be able to see that here momentarily. I'm gonna start the print. I'm gonna get some B-roll while it's printing. And, uh, and then we'll look at the print quality here momentarily. All right, well, I will see you back in about five hours when this is finished. Uh, in the meantime, maybe, I don't know, a little montage of some B-roll of it printing. All right, we're back and the print is done. It's been about five hours or so. Now, you saw some B-roll in the little printing montage and I'm pretty sure you caught it, but did you see the overhangs up here on the front? You can see that there was some cooling issues, but if we flip it around on the back, the back looks, looks absolutely fantastic. And that is because although there are two cooling fans on this hot end, it appears that the cooling that's coming from the rear of the tool head is better than the cooling that's coming from the front, which, you know, I mean, these things are pretty common um, amongst a wide variety of printers, but I just wanted to, to show you that so that you could see that cooling is quite a bit better from the back than it is from the front. Now, this particular model I'd never printed before, and so I had no idea that that was actually gonna be the case, but it turned out to be a good example of, uh, of what the cooling is like on this particular machine. Now. Let's, uh, let's wrap up with a couple of other features and then we'll take a look at this print a little bit closer and then I'll give you my impression of the machine. So this particular machine has the filament runout sensor. I didn't mention that in the beginning. It's also 600 millimeters per second is the uh, advertised speed. And also the belts on this machine being a Core XZ machine are auto tightening, which is kind of nice. Now it also has this kind of strange, interesting spool holder contraption here that uh, kind of spring loaded keeps the, uh, the filament kind of nice and tight on the spool. Interesting feature. Um, other than that, I think my only other complaint about this machine is this right here, the back. They have this beautiful front on this V3, but they didn't complete the back. And it just seems like that's maybe cost savings, but it would not have been difficult and I don't think it would have been too costly to just wrap that um, with the same type of material uh, that the main frame is made out of and uh, it would have ultimately just made this machine a beautiful appliance. So anyway, other than that, this printer comes in at 
95, I think it is. And I'll have a link on the screen and of course in the description. But I wanna thank Creality for sending this over. And I also wanna thank Polymaker for sponsoring this content. They sponsor all of our content and their incredible filament. And I'll have their link on the screen and in the description as well. Now, as far as my impression of the machine, I think it's a really good machine, and I think it's probably one of the better machines that uh, Creality has made. I'm super impressed with it, and if I had to line up three printers right now in Creality's lineup that I thought were really great machines, be the Ender 3 uh, V3 SE, the Ender 3 V3 uh, KE, and it would be this Ender 3 V3. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.